I'd like to welcome each and every one of you, those here on this call and those listening to this episode, to the two busiest weeks of my life that happen every year, Yay! starting today. It's Jazz Fest, right? Cheers. Yep, jazz yeah. Fest. Jazz right. Fest. You seem mm, real you jazzed about it. Damn it, Emily. <laughs> I was going to say, you don't sound too jazzed, <laughs> but... I'm actually excited, you know, I'm playing five shows and going to see five shows. Um, are you, are, did, did you buy a Jazz Fest ticket? No, no he didn't. Okay. <laughs> no, that's, that's a, for That's chumps. touristy shit, that's right? No. <laughs> no, that's for people that are rich. <laughs> I am not rich. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I have to work like on Fridays um, and then like, uh, yeah, I'm not going to the actual daytime fest stuff, but I'm going this weekend. I'm going to go see Ghost Note on Saturday night with, you know, see a little mono neon and some funk get down. Um, that's nice. going to be cool. But I'm playing tonight after we record this. I am <laughs> playing Friday at midnight. I'm playing Sunday at 930. I'm playing Monday at 3.30, and I'm playing Tuesday after spending all day at a different festival that's cheaper than Jazz Fest, but happening here in town at the same time. Uh, the playing after that, that night on Tuesday. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is the 3.30 one a p.m. or an a.m.? Uh, it's it's p.m. It's I'm shocked. So. Okay, great. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and that's then, only during Mardi Gras. Yeah, right. Exactly. 30 a.m. You're right. Let's not get crazy. Right. Not crazy. It's just jazz fest. It's <laughs> just jazz fest, right? Okay. I mean, there are plenty of shows that start at 1 o'clock and 2 in the morning, but, like, those are big name acts, like, that get those shows. It's crazy. I I will not be going to any of those shows. Um, but I am going to go see my keyboard hero, John Modeski, in three different groups next weekend not this upcoming week because jazz fest is two weeks right so he will be here the second weekend of jazz fest playing around town and some different arrangements and i'm just gonna go catch him in all three that's because cool he's my favorite that's have you seen exciting. him play before oh yeah okay. <laughs> I, I mean look it's he's, a legit question i don't favorite. know i see zach laughing like I no. figured, yes, but also I mean, I've seen John Modeski play. Well, I mean, here. I haven't. I don't know who he is as a human. So he is I one saw... of the three of Modeski, Martin, and Wood. Yes, he's Martin. He's the Martin. John I... Modeski is the Martin of <laughs> Modeski, Martin, and Wood. <laughs> I think it was Modeski, Schofield, Martin, and Wood that I saw at the Georgia Theater one time. Mm. That was pretty good. Yeah, pretty good I'm sorry. Are these lawyers? What's happening? <laughs> nope. They're, no, they're, but they're, they're Modeski, right, so Martin, and Wood. <laughs> Modeski, Martin, and Wood is a band. Okay. Modeski. Uh oh. Zach Frozen Time. Frozen Time. Josh, are you struck. Uh, He's been struck by, by the quantum ray. The yeah. quantum ray. <laughs> got Looks like Josh, yeah, Josh too. is too. Yeah. Oh no! They said that their internet's been. Look at their wonky. faces. Go ahead, take take a quick pick. At least, that's, yeah. at least they <laughs> paused on decent faces. You know, I hate yeah. it when you like glitch out and your face is like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or like you're just like. Like I just took three Ambien or something like that. I look like I did. <laughs> yeah. Our internet connection has still been doing that. So. Uh, so you were now I know that's okay. We bantered while you yeah. guys yep. reset. Yep. Um, so you want to continue what you're saying? You're saying Modeski, Martin, and Wood is a band, and and then Modeski, Schofield, Martin, and Wood is the same band with John Schofield on the guitar. Oh wow, that's literally yeah. what I said. And then my computer froze, and it looks like Adam was going like. What? And I'm like, motherfucker, how do you not know Modeski, Schofield, Martin, and Wood? What nonsense are you talking about? So, so like, for Emily and the listeners, what do they play? What's their genre? Jazz. Well, so, so it's, yeah. It's, it's jazz it, I mean, fusion. It's, it, jazz it's, fusion, yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So My favorite everything? thing, I, I do like them because Adam's made me like them, but... <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing about uh, John Modeski is that he plays keyboard, I mean, amazingly, with his hands and with his mouth. He, like, wah, 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 it's like all the notes out while he's playing yeah. them. He looks like he's throwing up the whole time he's playing them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, guitarists do that shit, too, though, mm -hmm. right? Like, like, yeah. I love that. Well, it's funny because John Modeski's biggest influences are one, one of the people that he often refers to as a major influence is Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, I can you see know, that. Modesky, yeah, Modesky Martin Wood played quite a few Hendrix tunes, and like he certainly embodies a lot of the same mentality 
that Hendrix did with the guitar and his approach to playing keys, you know, like it's all organic stuff. You know, he doesn't play any synths. It's all like real, real instruments, but then he makes them sound crazy as hell. Mm. You know, like yeah. he'll like, he'll like break them to make them sound distressed and stuff oh, like no. that. You know? He, were we at, was it, was it, Bear Creek, where that guy was walking around going, fuck John Lewis. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we never <laughs> found out why guy. either, but he was adamantly like, fuck John <laughs> Lewis. Mad- yeah. so like, sick. screaming it as he was walking to a funk show. <laughs> That's so, so, it's just such a weird <laughs> hate, you know? John <laughs> Dude, It was like, like impassioned. Right. Like, he meant it. It wasn't like, man, fuck John Medeski. This was wasn't like, a bit. He was pissed. I, I like, can't even John make this. Uh, my voice with his old lady or something. Right. Yeah, yeah, Ooh, yeah like John Medeski picked up his girl. Like that's the only th- that that is the kind of fuck John Medeski that this guy was giving off. You know, it was hilarious too. But now I want to listen. Nothing really it's, stopped I mean, me until good. you said that. Oh, it's good. Well, End of the world party is good shit. Yeah, like the, okay, so like they cover a wide range, right? So like their albums, I think most people can get into because they're tight and funky and like. They're really accomplished musicians, but then when they play live, they tend to push it out. And so that's where the, you're going to lose a lot of folks mm. because they get real abstract and stuff in the live setting. But their albums are, pr- are pretty much all just like super tight little grooves that are fun. You know, I like tight grooves. No, okay. Nobody puts Medeski in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah anyway, that'll be fun, man. Be, Except that one guy's old lady. To, that yeah. one guy's old lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, one of the groups that he's playing with is Project Logic, which is him and DJ Logic and, and um, Adam Deitch. Oh, that'd be cool. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. That's going to be really. The Avletis, the band leader of Lettuce, of Lettuce yeah. for those of yeah. you keeping score at home. And the show that I'm playing on Monday at 3 30 in the afternoon is this like music industry party, like private party for high brass music industry Mm. folks and Adam Deitch and his new project are going to be playing there. Like I'm sharing the stage with him. So that's going to be pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. That's exciting. Adam. about to leave you guys in the dust. No, I'm (laughs) I'm totally kidding. (laughs) See you suckers. (laughs) I'm totally kidding. Unless I'm not, in which case, bye. (laughs) No, no, no. I, 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 no, it would have to be a substantial amount of money that doesn't exist in the music industry anymore. Hmm. So I don't think there's any threat of that. <laughs> Sweet. Honest. Yes, the music industry is crushed. Ergo, we can keep you. Love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I saw Silver Linings, uh, yeah. the Int Power tomorrow is doing a tribute to the Gap Band. And I was oh, like, nice. that would be really cool. Mm-hmm. Lots of good stuff going on, man, for sure. Uh, how are y'all doing? This this is my busy week. You know, Zach, mm-hmm. are you feeling better uh, on the mend? I'm maybe sixty percent, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's kind of where I feel like I'm at. That's about fair. Sixty percent. I'm not kidding. I think the first time I had Corona, it took me about a month to get over it, like a solid month. Yeah. Well, like, he's he's got the that three hit combo though. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. when one is not enough, mm-hmm. double when, down. When one on isn't that enough. <laughs> yeah, but I'm here. Which yeah. is, doing it, you know. I'll, I'll give you that much. I'm gonna tell you, your voice sounds real sexy. It's got <laughs> a little rasp to it. <laughs> that, 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 yeah. It's all right. So silver lining. Well, I guess again. enjoy it while you can. Just, <laughs> right. Be back to my normal bullshit before too long. <laughs> normal <laughs> shrill <laughs> screeching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. right. <laughs> well, there goes old Banshee Zach. <laughs> Um, that, that you're known in love for. You know? Heck yes. <laughs> uh, I'm, I love the, uh, you, we refer to it all the time about how uh, we're kind of out of time, like when these come out and when we're talking about it. So like tomorrow, uh, I'm going to my second uh, state championship with my esports team. Woo! So I won't know. I don't, I don't know, you know, how we're going to do. But by the time this comes out, I will either have won or lost. <laughs> That's <a> true. <laughs> well, and this is about as close to... Re- Really, I mean, you know, this episode we recorded when you're listening to it three days ago. Yeah. You know, like we're we're right up there on the limit to, to yeah. this, this week. Uh, but that's all. It's when all I, good. When man. I joke to the most topical, 
You know? yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> What's well, happening in for, the world right now? I except for the fact that like most people now are listening, like catching up. Yeah, you know? I think we do have I think a lot of catch up. Day people. of recording, Jerry Springer died today. Yes. 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 What? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You, sure. you just found oh out. Oh my god. I had no yeah, idea. I know you're devastated, Emily. How are we going to go on without yeah. Jerry you're gonna Springer? Get on. <laughs> I saw that in my, like, the little just, like, notifications news feed you get on your phone and mm-hmm. just, like, swiped right on it and got rid of it, you know? I was just yeah, like, well, but no. not, not out of disrespect for Jerry Springer, but because I was like, I don't have the concern enough to see if this is true or bullshit, and it might be either one, you know? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's true, but it's just that it I don't... True fucking care dude like oh jerry no <laughs> well it's just he hasn't been relevant in like 10 years you know ten? What I mean? like, ten? but when he ten? was 20 years was 2013 <laughs> yeah he was the, there was still jerry springer coming out in 2013 well, no, but nobody cared you, about it the, were you the, watching relevant. jerry springer well, in 2013 no, but that I, doesn't I, mean I it didn't exist that. <laughs> <laughs> jerry like springer was last... only showing in hospital waiting rooms at that point <laughs> Damn. I feel like the last Damn. relevant thing Jerry Springer did as far as like social consciousness of who he is is a cameo in the Austin Powers series. Like Was he in that? And, yeah. That was like nineteen ninety nine. Like that's what I'm saying. Like he, I'm agreeing with you. Like, ain't nobody been worried about Jerry Springer for a long time. I don't like this conversation. There, there are people uh, listening to this show who were not alive when that happened. <laughs> Shut up. I don't like it. Look, You're old, you know, Emily. Just like us. Jerry Springer ran till 2018. <laughs> That's crazy. The, okay, but again, when was the last time anybody? It doesn't matter. He was on TV, so it matters he was to somebody. Money. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of people who are on TV, but that doesn't mean that people are watching them. You know what look, I'm saying? Dude, it's kind of like dude. we put out this podcast. That doesn't mean anybody was <laughs> listening to it. <laughs> Hot damn. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Tussin Zach right, right, coming in hard. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, man. Listen. It's, it's a good thing you got that sexy voice so you can get away with saying <laughs> some shit like that. Like, like, super out of pocket shit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> he was on Whose Line Is It Anyway? Oh, well, there you go. He was a guest on that. That means he made it. He mm. did it. Mm-hmm. That's how you know... Really? The standard of current <laughs> comedy, yes. Uh, I, just, I just listen. I just feel like Jerry Springer passing away is like one of those. Oh no! Anyway, I mean, type of type yeah, of but you got to be nice about it. Oh, well, you just don't, you don't have to be mean about yeah. it. Yeah, you, right. you don't have to be mean about it. Y'all don't be ugly. Be sweet. Be, nice. be sweet. Be nice. Rest in peace, Jerry Springer. For real. Yeah. 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 For real. <laughs> Chair in the chat. I would only Jerry. be upset if, like, chair, chair in the, the chat. chat. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Springer's grandchild is listening to the show and is like pissed or something. If you, if you, if, if you're listening. Jerry Springer's grandchild, they're not listening yeah. anymore. Jump in at this the Discord point. and tell me I'm a piece of shit. Yeah. Otherwise, no, they're longer listening. I don't Somebody want to else is out there is just saying fuck Zach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> if someone's running across a festival screaming <laughs> fuck Zach. <laughs> Well, the, the difference in that scenario is everybody's like, I don't know who Zach Evans is. <laughs> Everybody at that yeah, festival knew like who John like was. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, well, I think look, he's a uh, football player, actually. I think there's Zach, Zach Evans. John Medeski? <laughs> no, there's a Zach Evans a football player. So whenever you Google it, he comes up, which is like, oh, yes, perfect. In case I have a job oh, interview or something, you know what I'm saying? Right. Oh, okay, there you go. I was a former football player. Yes. That's you can no, no, no. Okay. I was like, there's, I'm a, I there's was like, no I'm a way big you would confuse fan, the two of us. And I'm not familiar with Zach. Evans. He's he's still in college. He's yeah. In, yeah. Okay. Uh. Well, let's play well, Starfinder. Oh. Not football. Not football. Okay. Let's play something that we can play. I might you know? could play football. She mm. said, like a liar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If it involved um, okay. rolling dice, I could play a simulation of a football game. Uh, yeah, we could play, we could play Blood Bowl. Yeah, you know? Okay. For sure. <laughs> oh, Heath, you're not allowed to. I mean, it goes that's, back to that's also Cup. fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. I, I'm going to put on some music, and I'm going to do something I haven't done in a while, oh. which is a full recap. Oh, oh nice. So, <laughs> I thought he was going to say, Zima, I'm going to shower. Yeah. Because it's been so busy. <laughs> <laughs> Madame Ziva is in her office and she gets a letter from Sedona. 
And no, uh, wow. maybe that's too far. That's too far, that's too far back. That's too far back. Okay. Recap um, the entirety of the APA. Oh, wow. no, 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 no. I, I need the to hear it. I'm, I have yeah. no idea what's what's going on, how we got here. Ooh, I believe Ziva. that. <laughs> Recap, you keep believe going. That. I'm going to go get some food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this will be a three part episode of Recap. Oh, we've turned uh, into an anime, an actual anime? Cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, okay. It does go back a little bit, though. Three years after the events of Signal Screams, the APA was once again tasked with going to a resort that was having some significant issues on the wintry planet of Jeddarat. On top of that, they learned that none other than Weldy was among a group of Xeno Wardens that had been trapped by the technology of some ancient ruins that they were researching. Upon further investigation, the APA revealed that an ancient, tyrannical civilization, the Civ, had once inhabited this planet, and that below the surface was an entire network of their architecture powered by quantum tech. The APA further explored these ruins and discovered that there were two gigantic Civ ships that were launched from Jeddarat, the World Seed, a generational colonization ship, and the Ark Prime, the ship that was meant to guide the World Seed with its superior firepower. However, through the brave acts of some rebellious Bantrids, a species that was enslaved by the Civ, they disrupted these plans and sent the World Seed into space without any of the Civ aboard, leaving the Ark Prime adrift and lost in space. The World Seed went on to get stuck in Leverian orbit, and over the mil millennia that followed, they formed into the moon, Hib. The IPA went to Hib and the World Seed, and they discovered the Bantrid's sad but courageous history. And they also learned the distressing news that the World Seed had awoken and sent a signal to the powerful Ark Prime. Then the Apollo Protection Agency returned to Absalom Station to share what they knew and to prepare for the imminent arrival of the Ark Prime into the packed world's star space. A month later, the Civ threat arrived and sent the packed worlds into disarray. After an intense meeting with the PAC Council to decide how to best allocate resources, the Ark Prime was upon Absalom Station. The Civ ship unleashed a devastating weapon onto the station, the Quantum Ray. This ray shut down every aspect of the station, including the Star Stone. Many emergencies broke out across the station and the APA went into action. Dealing with power outages, awakened commies, scared crowds, trolls, devils, shield and shield failures, our heroes worked tirelessly to protect the people of Absalom Station. After all of this, they were contacted by Lynn Camulin, the Director General of the Stewards, and told that the engineering team that he had sent to the reactor level to power up the Star Stones and the auxiliary generators have not reported back, leading him to be concerned that the mission had failed. So he asked the APA to head there to do the job. However, after finally getting as many refugees as possible secured at the Apollo Protection Agency headquarters, the heroes were faced with a new emergency, this one more personal and unnervingly connected to their past. The mother of Zolan Ulavestra, the rogue Aslanti Solarian that they had defeated so many years ago, arrived at the worst possible time. They kidnapped, she kidnapped the clone Weldy and then laid siege to the Pools of Paradise. The APA went to the pools to retrieve Weldy and deal with Lady Ulovestra only to find that she had joined forces with a powerful Velstrak of the Shadow Plane. This revealed that time and planes had become thin and unstuck due to the continued exposure to the Quantum Ray. During the harrowing combat that followed with the Velstrak and the Aslanti, a now corrupted Weldy clone used the last bit of his humanity to send himself and the Velstrak back to the Shadow Plane, all while he mutated into a horrific blend of Weldy, Velstrak, and Siv. The effects of the Quantum Ray were intensifying at a disturbing rate. After being abandoned by the shadowy Velstrak, Lady Ulovestra was easily dispatched and Uli and Etram immediately set to work to start putting the pools back in order. Over communications, Xeno-7 explains in his cryptic way that the Star Stone must be revived to slow the effects of the ray, but eventually the crew will have to stop the ray itself. Time has truly become nebulous as pockets of space move forward or backwards in time in random intervals. The APA, the APA took a brief moment to catch their breath and then head to the Star Stone. 
Now, we ended last episode with you arriving at the reactor level after descending deep into the depths of the spire. Some strange creature was watching you, and we ended as they were spotted by Orin. However, before we start there, I think, Emily, you wanted to actually reach out to the Shadow Protection Agency in regard to the new threat that is there? Did you want to do that? You bet I did. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So we're just going to, you know, in transit, this conversation happened before we pick up where we left off. Um... Okay. I mean, go, look, we don't have to even on, like do act a captain. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, we can act it out if you want, but like we, you, we had just talked in between episodes that uh, Ziva would have told them, yeah, what was happening. Having you know? seen the whole Velstrak shadow plane weldy situation occur, um, I mean, just trying to send them a heads up. And maybe even just sending them a message. I don't know if we have time to <laughs> converse with them. Like, right. I just like, yo, you up? Uh, you got a dangerous 20-something stoner on the way you need to be looking out for. <laughs> well, I think beyond that, too, is that Ziva's got to be feeling, like, a little unsettled. Because you didn't defeat a the little? Velstrak. And the Velstrak was coming for you, and you gotta think that this Velstrak is gonna keep coming for you, keep coming for you. But you can't go to the Shadow Plane, because you That's you it. have realized that the more, if you were exposed to the Shadow Plane again, you're, you're done for. Yeah. So, basically, it seems to me that the APA is hiring the SPA <laughs> to deal with Clone Weldy Civ and the Velstrak uh, overlord. I mean, like, is money going to exchange hands? <laughs> Who's to say? Right. But, no, we're like, calling <laughs> our sister branch because it's out of yeah, our well, jurisdiction yeah. is what it exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. how we're going to play this. Um, but no, would straight up put a call in to, uh, you know, the twins and just, there's not much time, but, oh, some shit happened. Um, and like, would try to sum it up as best as she could and to just kind of really reiterate we're not exactly sure what is happening here but this it's like the planes are shifting everything's becoming thinner and overlapping and keep an eye out but especially for that Velstrak and well Weldy or what used to be Weldy just keep an eye out and we'll touch base once we get Starstone back online. Ziva out. I'm just kind of like, yeah. The, the artist so like, formerly known as Weldis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's, he's no longer Weldis man. He's Weldis Civ, you know. Mm-mm, I don't like it. It's not great. It's not great. Um, okay, cool. So now that we've planted those seeds for, you know, no real reason. <laughs> no real reason. Uh, yeah, um... I still there's still some housekeeping to do before we deal with this mysterious stranger. You guys leveled up what? Um, last episode, and we usually try to do like a bunch of like RP around your level ups. But considering that we are like in the moment here, what in in fiction in in the narrative, you guys leveled up because you're being exposed to this time dilation and so you're like a strong like a future version of yourselves basically Mm -hmm. so that's how you achieved all the new abilities that you have but uh let's just go down the line and talk real quickly about kind of your big thing that you got uh let's start with heath Uh, i got more than one big thing uh, but, well, you can talk but, about all your big things, uh, hey, but none of your uh, little things. None of my little things. Well, hey, that's the way I want it, baby. Uh, Medium-sized things, all right? Yeah. I got two big nuts and a little thing in between. Right. <laughs> medium-sized. Uh, no, so... <laughs> okay, medium-sized. So, uh, both of my fighting styles got an upgrade. Uh, so my yeah. Armor Storm gets its capstone... And my squad gets its next one as well. So Armor Storm gets on the bounce, the highest level thing it gets at 17th. Um, so basically, I can move, use my full movement and still full attack. Yeah, you're basically permanently nice. hasted. Right. Nice. Yeah. 
uh, eat, simple to the point, and I love it. Um, and then my second, the the uh, squad fighting style, I really love this. I got at ninth level. I've I've been a squad fighting style for nine levels, which is crazy. Um, as a move action, I can expend a resolve point. Uh, excuse me, resolve point to teleport, switching places with an ally within sixty feet. So I can just pull the switcheroo, get you out of danger, and put me in danger, or you know, awesome. manipulate the battlefield how I need to. Almost took something similar to that, but I was like, mm. mm-hmm. no. I did take exactly that. Oh, yeah. Well, ah. well tell, tell us well, about it. So uh, mine was a feat trading places, functionally identical. Uh, one RP, it's move action, and I can trade places with any friendly or any willing friendly uh, within my normal range of movement. So within 40 feet, I can just swap places with somebody. Uh, one use per uh, long, short rest. So, I mean, it's got to be like a, a short range teleporter situation, right? Uh, some, has to be something a, like that. The flavor, the, for the that flavor of felt. it is like is you know certain combat styles, fighting styles are able to swap places and move in and out, like kind of weaving between each other within the group. But I like the the more techy teleporty mm-hmm. kind of I yeah it's your quantum your quantum particles yeah man. well especially since the the hour two are so similar you know like mm-hmm. the only difference is range and mine does not have to be willing I can just do it to you mm-hmm. um but it's I can mine straight up says teleport well. you know like mine's just, it is teleporting mm-hmm. okay so there you go awesome uh so that was your level up then Josh no, my other uh, thing, because this was my level 16 mechanic, I also get a mechanic trick, you okay. know, being level one level soldier, uh, I took energy, sorry, I took energy transference. Oh. So, something new, I don't remember which book it's from, but it's a newer uh, trick, uh, costs one RP and is a reaction when taking energy damage. I can grant three up to three weapons within 30 feet of me with it's like casting the spell supercharge on them. Hmm. So an extra 46 damage within like as long as their attack lands within the next round. Nice. Nice. Yeah. For three weapons. So I could do it for myself and two others just, just because, you know, that's just, really, that's really just great. taking, uh, uh, but I have to take energy damage. So it's like take energy damage and then redirect that to your three different weapons. weapons. Like, yeah, to my allies yeah. weapons. Uh, yeah, so that is uh, out of interstellar species. Okay. Mm. Uh, actually comes from the Shimmerings, uh, who figured out oh, how to do that yeah, first. Yeah. Cool. I like it. What's the like what's the lot. distance on that? Like, how far can you be to transfer? 30 feet. 30 feet. No, well, you're always like okay. 120 feet away. I'm going to make it to where I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> um, okay, great. Uh, Emily, what about Ziva? Um, this wasn't a huge level up for Ziva. Um, in fact, I finally took a feat that I had been putting off for I don't know how long. I finally took Iron Will. Um, just because oh, okay. cool. we've been facing a lot of things that required a lot of uh, will saves. And I feel like her <laughs> resolve is really set now after having, you know... Faced it down. Fa- yeah, like... We're we're fucking hardcore now in our will. Yeah. Ergo, our character sheet should reflect that. Um, so yeah, that's really the only thing that I got. Honestly, I I have now I can use my expertise die on engineering as well. So that's helpful. Maybe if everyone else is unconscious and I have to roll engineering. <laughs> <laughs> that very specific set of circumstances comes up. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, okay. Cool. Um, anything else good, or is that that all you got? I mean, that's about <laughs> it. I mean, I, I, I boost, I boosted as normal. Uh, one does put some ranks in some things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ranky I ranks. said no. I said no small stuff, Emily. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. What about you, John? Uh, yeah. So for Kuiper, um, he took the feat Spellbane, um, which is a plus two insight bonus to saving throws against spells and spell like abilities. Um, yeah. So I think somehow the quantum ray just ended up impacting in the house somehow with this. The operative exploit uh, is knockout shot. So basically, for my debilitating trick, I can attempt to knock the target out in one blow. 
Uh, but he must uh, succeed a fortitude save or fall unconscious for one minute. Oh, damn. That's that's so just he, crazy, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Straight up knock somebody out. I, wow. I, hate, I hate it so <laughs> wow. much. You've been hanging out with Mike too much. All right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. Um, but there was also something else that I wanted to add on there. Uh, so that, like, so also of note, during this catastrophe, Kuiper has gotten a real educational experience of a dedicated diplomat in action. I think we all know who we're talking about here. And he's, he's seen his captain <laughs> assuage the fear of like 100 people, like a, a mob, you know, from a full blown riot, you know. And it was inspirational, okay? It was informative. Now, the reason I bring this up is that Kuiper has zero points in diplomacy as an yeah. operative okay zero points in diplomacy okay his Sabana. base is a plus five and it's been that way since signal screen since uh he was made and when you since think about it though <laughs> yeah now when you think about this though is that it actually makes sense and i thought this was a neat little nugget this is the only time i would be able to bring it up is that who has ever heard of Vesk diplomacy? Okay, it sounds like the start of a joke or some some sort of military slang. It to me yeah. that makes perfect Vesk sense. Vesk diplomacy Why, is a yeah. fucking doshe go up to your neck. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 exactly. <laughs> they would practice the name of a do- It's the yeah. name of a doshe yeah. yeah. They would practice that diplomacy on his fingers. You know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and, and so that's the thing is, is that so this is a small but noticeable milestone in Kuiper's growth moving forward, okay? So I decided to sink my last skill point into diplomacy. So now he's rocking a hard plus six. That's a medium, okay? Woo! Woo! All right. That's, that's not a small thing to that's talk about either. That's not small, no, all right? That's, that's juicy. No, that, <laughs> that's big. Uh, he, he was putting on his lore voice for all that. I know. You guys, you guys heard him? John was full on in his lore voice. Like, I am excited to talk about this. I, well, know? yeah, because, I mean, this was something that I thought, like, oh, this is really fucking cool, and it's got a narrative hook to it, you know? Yeah. Right. I'm um, about it. But, yeah, so, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, Kuiper's not a charismatic cat, but he's actually Ooh. just a little bit more. He cat- is he, kind of, though. Well, yeah. I mean, he, he well, he's a little bit more diplomatic. So yeah. it's something. Just saying. Yeah, he may yeah. not be very diplomatic, but he's he's got some charisma. Right, he's got right. some charisma. Uh, all right. Well, that's very cool. Uh, Zach, you're up. Uh, yeah, 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 um, yeah. Your boy Oren took combat casting. Because, I mean, why not? Do it, get it's it. It's like uh, basically just a bonus to your, uh, um, I think, ACN saves uh, against... Um, yeah, attacks of opportunity when you're casting a spell. Um, and then I got, for whatever reason, an extra level three spell? I don't know why they're giving me those this late in the game, but okay. Uh, I took pinpoint navigation, which is mostly flavor. Just You gain a supernatural insight about your physical place in the universe, focusing your mind on time and space around you. Uh, I just thought it was thematically appropriate was just just say, for Orin like, the pilot, you know? Yeah. Uh, just took that. And then the level six spell that I got, uh, I took Psychic Surgery, which is a really nice... Why would you take that? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I don't know what inspired <laughs> what, what, what that. What happened in your recent history that would make <laughs> yeah. you think that? <laughs> Where's some more behind need? that? You yeah. Know? Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it heals the target of all intelligence, wisdom, and charisma damage, restores all points permanently drained from the target's intelligence, wisdom, and charisma, eliminates all ongoing confusion, fear, and insanity effects, removes any mental afflictions that could be removed with the spell magic, as well as mental diseases, removes all effects magically altering the target's memory, even instantaneously effects and it can restore memory to perfect clarity even if the memory loss is due to the mundane passage of time nice. so it's a good unfuck the situation mm-hmm. spell it takes 10 minutes to cast so you can't really do it in combat okay but the but, next time some brainy motherfucker throws down spells on our boy we can just kill him and fix yeah. the problem ourselves. Yeah, exactly. There, you go. <laughs> there we yeah. go. There you go. Right. There we go. Right. The lesson that Orin took away was that is I wanted to be able to kill him. Now exactly. I can. Now I can. Now I can. <laughs> yeah, okay. You see, that is how Orin's brain operates. <laughs> uh, 
It's like, uh, all right, oh, well, the magic's too powerful. I'll just learn that magic so then I don't need this, <laughs> this other person. Can't Damn. use it against me if I got it myself, yo yeah. bitch. <laughs> well, as uh, is kind of softly tradition around these parts, you level up, you get an inspiration. So we're also going to go around and do some inspirations. It's it's full on housekeeping episode okay. today. It's okay. This it's is all right. high this level is, play, y'all. I yeah, mean, this it's is big, what happens. It's big stuff. Uh, we're going to go reverse now. So, Zach, go ahead and roll a D6. Okay. Hopefully, I'm really pulling for you this time that you're going to get oh, inspiration. Oh, dude, that no, it never happens, you, man. I don't hope you even, get an ally. Like, don't even worry, about it. Don't, even worry about it. don't even worry about it, man. Uh, he gets a plus one to that because of psychic surgery. <laughs> 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 so, D6 to start us off. I already you rolled did. it. You got a five. Five. All right, great. Uh, so, that's going to be general. Yep. So you just tell me when to stop. You know how this doesn't goes. Doesn't matter, man. You just stop. It doesn't. I mean, All doesn't right. Uh, <laughs> we need to overcomplicate this. Alex. Just no, give it's me not some. Alex. Oh. This, is, this is from Verdux. Okay. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, don't be the Internet Explorer of Adventurers. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, don't die. Man, you know what? Like, That's some I'll, fortune I'll cookie like, wisdom. I buy that shit, dude. <clears throat> Excuse me. I like starting round two. Okay, I like the <laughs> job. This is a choice I make. Yeah, yeah. shit on a shirt. I'm telling you, yeah. that'll sell. Top around too. Uh, okay, well there you go, Zach. It's pretty pretty on brand for your style mm-hmm. inspirations, uh, John. Uh, shit, <laughs> luck. Yeah. Hey, welcome to the team, bro. <laughs> Six. Six. Okay, well, that's a personal for you. Go ahead and roll a D12. Wow, for I you. got a personal. Holy fuck. Mm-hmm. Oh, you said that. Now. Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Got an eight. An eight. An eight. Uh, okay. This is from uh, Jason Laptop. Hey. Right. It ain't boy. catnip, but go nuts anyway, you cat face some bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will definitely try, Jason. I will definitely try. <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, all right, uh, Emily. I got a five. Okay, so that's going to be a general. Pick a number between one and 25. 23. All right. This is from monkeys, bears, and robots. Whoa! Way back when I was just an itty-bitty inspiration living in a box under the stairs in the corner of the basement of the house half a block down the street. You know the place. Well, anyway, back then, my life was going swell, and everything was just peachy. Except, of course, for the undeniable fact that I had never inspired a character from the Strange Table Fellows before. I'm not sure why I had to make Adam quote Albuquerque for this, but take your plus mumble mumble anyways. (laughs) (laughs) Are you are you familiar with the song, Emily? No. Albuquerque by Weird Al. You need to listen. Oh, I'm familiar of it, but not enough for the lyrics. I nailed it. The end. Bravo. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Good. That wasn't awkward at all. That's yeah. what I'm here for. So <laughs> well, you're speaking of awkward, Josh, you're up. Me? Awkward? <laughs> Maybe making people feel awkward, but I, I don't feel like I'm awkward. <laughs> I just said speaking of awkward. Oh. No. But then you're doing you said a great me. job. <laughs> all right. What do I need? A six? Yeah. Uh, you roll that. Roll that D six. All right. That's a six. Okay. Look at you getting a personal. Uh, roll a d12 for me. I have 12 personals. Up, almost. Up, up to, almost. Yeah. Uh, I accidentally rolled two of them, so we'll just take the first one. Uh, it's a 12. Okay, well, I need you to roll again. <laughs> what was the second one? Uh, a two. Is it a two? Two. Okay, two. All right, this one, another one from Veridux. Ooh. Hold on, just a second. You can do it, Fairy Belly! <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I had to get my voice to right. practice that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to get, I had to get, your, get my anchor phrase. What's your anchor phrase? <laughs> it's Fairy Belly. Uh, Fairy Belly, belly is yeah. it. Oh, you know, okay. like, <laughs> I just had to say Fairy Belly <laughs> first. Fairy Belly? Fairy Belly? I'm impressed though, Adam. That took a single, like, you muted, turned your head to the side, and there's Fairy yep. Belly. Yep. <laughs> yep. As long as you got a solid that's an anchor, anchor phrase, phrase. Yeah. that's it, yeah. baby. I feel like that one's there forever, you know? Yeah. Uh, okay, and Heath wrapping it up. All right. 
The D6. Uh, four. Four. All right. That's general. Pick a number between one and 25. That's not 23. Oh, man. You stole the Michael Jordan number. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, 21. 21. All right. This is from J-Rod. Nice. Oh, uh, it's funny that you made a basketball reference because this too is a basketball reference. I love it. I love it. Practice? We're not talking about practice. We're talking about the game. The game we all loved. So take some inspiration from the answer and know we're here to see you play the game, not practice. What is that reference thing? Stick to the fundamentals, you know? Jump shot. Uh, there pick was and an roll. interview. I can't remember which player it that, was. Oh, I'm Play thinking up. playoffs? No, no. Playoffs? <laughs> We no, got a win a damn remember. game. <laughs> I can't remember the player, but it was some player was being interviewed, and there and he wasn't going to practice, and oh. so pe- and people were like asking him about that, and he was like, "Practice? We're sitting here talking about practice right now. You want to talk about practice? We're, we're talking about it's practice. Alan, it's Allen Iverson. Yeah, that's yeah, um, that's okay. it. And I think they did a bit off of that on Ted Lasso. Oh, okay. I, I believe you. I it's, it sounds that. right. Nice. The Iverson quote. Right. That's fun. Yeah, all right. Well, it was like a reference because it wasn't a direct quote. Right. There, but, but yeah. But anyways, there you go. So there's a round of inspiration for Yay, you guys. Thanks, gang. Um, and now we can pick up where we left off with Oren spotting this mysterious stranger. And I actually have a picture for you guys. Oh. Uh, so yeah, I just have to pull it up. I love seem to be cake. X mysterious. Oh. X Xmas. Yes. What? Yeah, he got okay. it. Got okay. it, I got it. there. Killed it. <laughs> Fucking nailing it. All right. Here you go. This is <gasps> who you see. Oh. Who the fuck Final Fantasy character is this? <laughs> <laughs> I love him so much. Oh, man. He looks like he would be on the cover art of some of the smut that I read, and I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, I'll give you so that. Nice. So what we're looking at is like a blue-gray-skinned, very suave-looking male. It's a butterfly that, tiefling, bro. That that I was gonna get there. It's a butterfly <laughs> tiefling <laughs> with big, he's got a big sharp, he's got horns. a sharp navy blue suit mm-hmm. with a long sword. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those beautiful shoes. golden wings. What the fuck is with those shoes? And they are big golden horns. This, this is a Neil Gaiman character. <laughs> it's a Neil Gaiman character. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when Hunt, dude, one hundred percent. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty accurate. Um, Damn. Does he have uh, additional swords at his waist? Straight up. Like, <laughs> yes. He's got a lot of swords. unlimited of swords. Unlimited <laughs> swords. Um, it's so, infinite. <laughs> yeah. So it is all. Orin, you're the one that spotted him. Okay. So I don't know what to kinda... I don't know what I forget the context of So you guys were working your way down the spire through all the mechanical levels. Okay. And you had got to the like outside of the reactor level and you finally caught caught him out of the corner of your your eye. And you and mm-hmm. saw him, and he kind of stepped out of the shadows. Okay, so I mean, Oren would probably be like, "Hey, uh, who the fuck's this guy?" I, I mean, he's like, like, "Hey, buddy, how's it going?" Okay, <laughs> all I see is a handsome devil over there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, none of y'all have addressed well, him, you know. <laughs> spill it. Who are you? No, I'm There's that diplomacy at work, guys. Well, yeah, yep, it's plus six. <laughs> yeah, plus six. Yeah. Paying, paying the bills. So I already told you. I have prefaced this. <laughs> he is not the most diplomatic cat. So, we'll like, is, what is he doing? Is he just standing there? Yes. Uh, it's too late, though. Your buddy has already asked the question. Um, what a strange question. I wonder... If you understand what you're asking, you may call me Miriam. All right, Miriam, what's up? Nope. Niren. <laughs> Niren. Say that one more time in a real word. Like Niren. Niren. Okay. Yeah. N-I-R-I-N. Correct. Nice. Look, bub, I would love to uh, have this weird little coy little chat with you, but we're kind of in a hurry, so can we just get to the end where you tell me the important thing that we need to know or 
or what you want from us because like I said right. we got like, things to do places to be that yeah. sort of thing what do you we're, know that we do not know we're right outside of the like Starstone area correct mm-hmm. like we're mm-hmm. there now mm-hmm. um, I, I'm sorry are you here to, to do something with Starstone are you with the the team that was sent here to reestablish the link I have always been here This moment in time is but a crossroads, stretching out in branches across all eternity. And every path I have ever walked has drawn me to this point. Can we do a check? Sure. What would that be? Mysticism. Ain't that the way? Yeah, I mean, Lauren's definitely... (laughs) If he'll let me, I'll aid it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, know? I can auto aid that. I now. can too. Uh, no, so those you know knowledge checks aren't aidable. Yeah. You know, I know. I'll That's roll a separate one. Oh, 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 All right, oh, this is pretty high. Uh, I've oh. got to do a little math here. I like that you doing math. Yeah, forty-five. Woo. Okay. 45 uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what you know that they're not. Okay. Um, you know, you recognize that Niren is neither an angel or a fae, despite the appearances. And you can surmise that they're an outsider from an even stranger dimension. And because you exceeded it by five or more, you recall rumors of similar looking beings with time manipulation powers. Is he Protean? No. Uh, I want to ask him in a very particular language said where do you come from in Civ language does he understand it I'm sorry your gibberish means very little to me ah shit I must I must be off now and he disappears he like just disapparates and disappears (laughs) alright well uh, we'll see I guess (laughs) Before that you. was, <laughs> command some powerful magic. Like, how powerful? Like, extremely powerful, Fell. On a scale of 55. Mm. How much power? 75. 75. Oh, my God. Oh, God. It is infinite. That's over 9,000. <laughs> it is all. He, he breaks the 55 point scale, I'm afraid. What? Goodness. Huh. Um, I don't know. He was there when the the 55 rule was written. Oh, I'm sure he's. (laughs) Do not recite the deep magics to me. (laughs) 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 Yes, thank you. That's that's kind of what I was getting at, though, Warren. Like, he's not really around right now, but I don't think that was the last time we're going to see him. No, whoever he or it was, is. And just. His name was Niren? Niren. Niren, yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't buy it's it. Very symmetrical I, it name. Mm, it's name. It's the same, same spell yeah. backwards as forwards. That's always yeah. a bad sign. And I don't really like <laughs> mystical characters. <laughs> My name is Race Car. <laughs> <laughs> Love y'all. If I had to have a palindromy name, it would be Race Car. <laughs> 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 oh, that's great. Oh shit. Um, well, as Enlightening as that whole experience wasn't, we uh, wasn't, yeah. still got to get to the Star Stone. Agreed. Yep. Let's go. Uh, okay. So yeah, you're you're. <laughs> Attention! You're at the you door. need to go to the Star Stone. <laughs> <laughs> um. Give me just one moment. What even is a moment in times like these? Right. Uh, so I will say you have noticed that your communication devices are no longer functional. Mm. Um, and as you open the door, I'm going to put you on a map. And you step into this area. Um, you see what must be some side effects of this quantum ray on the star stone some of which is like 
small tears of bizarre temporal, uh, yeah, bizarre temporal energy, just kind of like in little pockets. You know, I remember taking King, and you would you would go mm-hmm. through those levels, and you'd see those like little spaces of just like ripped, yeah, space. It's 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 that basically okay. is and we, what and you're we seeing. See these on on. Like just kind of a, like there, I'm gonna just say in the interest of saving time and more setting the scene, you will see these throughout this entire area. Mm-hmm. They're avoidable, you know. Um, they're not large. You can you can move around them. Yeah, that was um, my question. Can we just yeah. circumnavigate them? So, yes. And yes. just to clarify, in my brain, these aren't like like drift travel chunks have been taken. This is just like missing chunks of time and space is that like correct okay yes yes um you you see that wherever these spaces are like the metal let's say there's one on the wall the metal is like rusting at a rapid rate and then unrusting it's time like yeah totally like it's it's like you you just see like time spreading in both directions at varying rates in all these little spots, you know, and it's unsettling and it's unnerving because I don't even have the words to describe it. This is beyond normal comprehension, mm-hmm. you know. But because you guys are all high level enough, you're not you're not like having to roll against like a shaken effect. But yeah. you would know that if like a normal citizen walked in here, their their minds could be like pulled apart by this because it's just beyond understanding yeah. you know um so it's the rest of this room, folks yep Average so the, Tuesday. The, the tunnel that you find yourself in um plain white ceramic plates seal the walls of this cylindrical tunnel a set of maglev rails runs down the floor of the tube their sleek black tracks silent and bereft of power patches of Air burst into strange shimmering clouds which swirl into undulating patterns before vanishing into nothingness. Um, among other things that you see here is four skidamander fitted uniforms lying in a rumpled heap near the middle of the corridor befo- beside a few discarded engineering tools. Oh. Are you doing an STF and friends tie-in I don't know about that's, yet. That's straight up what I <laughs> right. thought of. Are the uniforms moving by any chance? No, they're empty. They're they're empty. Are they like... They're just like in a, hump, in a heap in the middle of the floor. But they're not like degrading and then reforming and all that? Like they're not doing no, anomaly not. stuff? Is there like dust around them? Like maybe the creatures that were wearing them disintegrated from old age? Would you like to move up and inspect it? Sure. Why the hell not? Is there a specific? Well, <laughs> all right. Roll a death save. Game. And where could you paint? Obviously, I'm sorry. Right, right, right in the, in the middle. Avoiding the. Uh, yeah, the like I, as, it, here. as I said, that's that's like flavor description. Yeah. You guys are not at risk of those anomalies okay. at this point. You know what I mean? Like you, you can safely move through. So. Let's check it out. Yeah, so you do, and you once you get closer, you can see that there are holographic name tags um, on the uniforms, and that these are all engineering outfits, right? Um, and you see four, four names, four uniforms, and each uniform has a different name. Uh, the names are Silo, Quat, Tybee, and Vanut. The uniforms have no signs of damage or violence. But maybe more importantly, they're also devoid of the Skittermander engineers. They're just this empty is, uniforms. This is likely the engineers that were sent down by Camulon, by Lynn. Mm. As you're exploring or looking at these uniforms, a tiny Skittermander whelp oh, no. zips out of the shadows oh, and runs up to Ziva's ankle and starts just like playfully chewing on your 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 boots just like, oh, it's like tiny, this no. tiny tiny little well they got re oh, look they got hit by the time fall they look got hit by the time fall for sure oh no i mean ziva would pick pick the whelp up and say i 
This may be one of the engineers. Look around, see if the others are nearby. Yes. Uh, As you pick it up, it's it's just like squirming all around you. Like you can barely hold on to it. It's like kind of like biting at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like Skittermender whelps well, still have their little feet. Yes. They still have yeah. their yeah. little yeah. their little yeah. nope rope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. nope rope. Yeah, yeah. Um, so gross. Yeah, and yeah. and they uh, so it's like you know like a puppy who like is like simultaneously trying to get out of your mm-hmm. arms while licking your face at the mm-hmm. same time. Mm-hmm. That's that's what you're experiencing with this whelp right now. <laughs> Just too excited not to piddle on you, you know. Okay. <laughs> right. Hey, right. Baby. Oh, be careful! It's going to be. Oh. Oh, this um, you you would know. You. Everybody would know that whelps at this stage are are very. I mean, all very instinct uh, kind of. Vulner- yeah. Well, they're and they're vulnerable too. They don't, yeah. you know, they're they don't have a lot of hit points that's, or anything like that. They're that's like why Zeba puppies, was like, you know? see if you can find the rest of them because. I mean, we're all intelligent enough to know that this is probably what's happened. These are the engineers, and they got aged. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not entirely convinced that they all got de-aged. Yeah. I mean, all, well, is there any sign that uh, we're gonna find one an of them old went man the other? One, like dying? Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. Well, that's why I asked about the dust. Like, does it look like maybe? Mm-mm. Okay. Mm-mm. Um. I, I guarantee you, Ziva has some kind of designer bag or something on her person. I have a null um, space yeah. chamber, bro. Like, <laughs> is just there you put, like a Pokemon? Is that what you're saying can here? You, can you put living things in null space chamber? I, I think that oxygen. there's oxygen. I think there. I'm sure you can. You don't you listen can. to Heath. He's just trying to relive his Pokemon master. Well, I'm, Look, I'm I can, sure you I play can. Pokemon every day. That's not the problem. <laughs> I should know if you could keep them in there for an extended period of time. Probably not for. Probably not indefinitely, but. I also, mean, it's got to mess with all the shit that's in that Null's fo- null space bag. The only air within yeah, the pocket it's... space is that which enters when you open the entrance. The device does not accumulate bulk. Uh, mm. the, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if that would be a safe place. I mean, but I don't know where a safe place would be either. Yeah, there's not exactly anywhere that we can. Backpack? Orin has mean, a lot of robes on. I think that's the perfect spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they're if they're looking at Orin, like he's gonna yeah. babysit this baby skitter. I, I mean, uh huh. I, I mean, like, well, he will, but he's just gonna be grumpy about it. I, Ziva, Ziva will put it put it on her person because I'm trying to stay back more. Mm-hmm. I don't think a, a person who potentially is in melee a lot should be holding the baby. That, that's true. That's true. Um, but I can bodyguard the baby. That's the you thing. You can bodyguard the baby. <laughs> so I'm telling you right now that it's it's so rambunctious that the like holding holding the skittermander whelp would be like a problem. You know what I mean? Like imagine. Like a, a a a puppy beagle, yeah, just squirming all over you. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's you know, like I don't recommend you just putting the skittermander whelp under your arm and carrying him through this dungeon. <laughs> okay, you know, I mean, like, do we not like have you, backpacks? That kind of thing. That's that's what I said. I've got a backpack that's currently empty. All right. Well, you're always like pretty far away from the immediacy of the combat too that'd be a good person to hang on to it I mean I just don't know how else I mean our our communicators are down there's nobody else around here we can't just like set this baby outside of the room and hope for the best no got any tape and a zip stick yes (laughs) (laughs) there we go (laughs) there we go zip it inside of the backpack so that it's not squirming around and call it right. done. That is the Orin, just, just burrito it. The badass Orin's just gonna of cast baby charm Bjorn's. person on it. How long does that last? One hour per level. Okay. Okay. So okay. seventeen hours. It's a uh-huh. DC twenty two. Okay. Saving throw. I d- doubt very seriously it could even hit that. I mean, what's it got a plus one to its will save or something? If that. A skittermender whelp. Yeah, oh, dude, uh, the, 
you got it. You know, like there's no way that the Skittermander Whelp can save. All right, so here's magic. here's what I can do once it's charmed, right? Um, I can try to give the target suggestions. I have to succeed at an opposed charisma check to convince it to do anything it wouldn't ordinarily do, which is like, hey, be calm, relax. We're here to help. Stay in the backpack. Stay in the fucking backpack. <laughs> Listeners, Adam is uh, licking his arms <laughs> like <laughs> so all six of them straight up, straight up going, arms. going uh, stitch mode. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I just feel like at at this point, o- Oren's psychic abilities are so strong he can manipulate time and space around him with him. He can convince a baby to fucking be chill. <laughs> I just I feel mean, like that's... With, with your magic, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure you got yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Solid. Not with my charming personality, <laughs> no, but mm-hmm. with with his magical prowess. Yeah, prowess, it's, I like that. I, I was just watching The Mandalorian, so it's like it's like the bond between The Mandalorian and Grogu, you know? Like, oh, yeah. He's a gruff kind of asshole to start with, but they love each other, and now magically... Where- he loves you and we'll chill in the backpack, correct? Listeners, where is that fan art? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is the beginning of Oren's end where he's sitting on a porch with a skittermander. Yep. This is how it plays out. <laughs> like uh, begrudgingly friends. Uh, um, okay. So yeah, all right, you've secured uh, you secured the whelp. Um, you don't know which of the four this w- this one is, but Could we hold uh, up the holographic name tags? And mm-hmm. point to them and like be like, hey, this one? No, you could certainly try. Yeah, let's do yeah, that. You could certainly try. I think it's probably CeeLo. We hold up CeeLo first. Can Anything? It's CeeLo. It's <laughs> <not bad. laughs> Too easy. Isn't try that hard. crazy? Next time. You know what? <laughs> we know what? We hold up another one. <laughs> it's quad. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Just a big fan of name tags, you know. Name tags. He snatches best. the name tags like Stitch and just like chewing on them. Just gloms it. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna call this one CeeLo anyway. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Let's try uh, to find right. the rest of these uh, skitter. Yeah. I, check I would the say, to make sure they're not. I there. would say that we put their uniforms in the null space thing so that yeah. they have yeah uh, yeah so they're not yeah yes yeah. yeah yeah okay that makes sense armored and whatnot this poor little right. skittermander's wife we're gonna bring him home and be like here's your here's your husband, <laughs> here's your husband. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck am i gonna do with this raise it so, <laughs> yeah, there's, right, there you go is the, and there's no other sign of the other whelps or skittermanders or whatever in this area correct uh, correct, yes. Okay. Push forward, I guess. A little Benjamin Button situation going <laughs> on here. I love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so there's, there's a door obviously here not to... any more Skittermanders in this hall. Correct, right yeah. Wow. And so there's a door here to the southwest um, that you approach. And, when, and Kuiper, you probably want to join him, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me actually move I'm thinking about it. Yeah. He, he was, was just lagging. diligently was looking for other Skittermanders. That's yeah. what it was. That's what it was, uh, you know? So when you approach this door, your communications device crackles. Also, at the same time, one of the time dilations seems to spread out a- across you guys for a brief moment. And I want you to just see this. Like, all of a sudden... Zeno and Oren are pitched against the wall. A door between them, guns in hand. Both are ready to enter the room ahead. The area Zeno? looks from Z- Zeno and Oren pitched against the wall. A door between them, guns in hand. Both are ready to enter the room ahead. The area looks familiar and recognize it as Lieutenant Sharu's garrison on the Condus. And then you hear over the comms. What we do now, here in this moment has the power to determine the future. And then you guys are back in the present, looking at this door. Ah! Orin has, I mean, for sure, like a moment of like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is some time, can I mysticism check to like, I mean, just better understand, was I transported in time or was I seeing something from the past? Yes. 
You know what I mean? Like okay. it's it, like that like, time overlapped on the like, hour. Time. Like you, like you relived it, but you were still here doing this. So, so what's happening is an, that time, a time flashback. Time is no longer a straight line. Oh, it's an Absalom uh, station. It's, it's a flat circle, Jeremy, you know. Yeah, and so like, yeah, yes, so you Jeremy were back Jeremy. in time, but you didn't go back in time. You just experienced that in this moment because like you're no longer perceiving time in a linear fashion, you know. Yeah. So this is not loca. Okay, in my mind, this was location based. It's not. It is like person based time manipulation. It, it maybe it's oh, weird God. shit. Okay. It's, it's weird, it's weird shit. stuff. All right, fair. Wibbly Wobbly starts <laughs> playing and the helicopter whir goes <laughs> on in the background for a yep. second. Yep. Uh, so there. Okay. So there's this door then in front of you. Uh, uh, real quick, check for traps. Sure. Or any any other weird fuckery yeah, with this perception. door. Perception. I mean, dude, we already had the weird fuckery. I well, think. any. That's why I said any other. <laughs> <laughs> any additional? Would you like some more? No thanks. <laughs> I mean, forty-seven on the perception check. Okay, that doesn't beat it by much, but that does reveal a electrified door trap. Oh, wow. And in fact. It is the exact same technology <gasps> as in Sharu's thing as the door trap that fucked you guys up when you went and fought the, your first mini boss. What was their name? Um, oh, what was their name? So Lieutenant no, Sharu. No, 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 no. no Lieutenant Sharu prior. was off on the ship, right. and the, and and her lieutenant was there in the in the. All, it started with that, O. Olavestra? Olaraja. Olaraja. Oh my god, that was yeah. four years yeah, ago. That's yes. been a yes. Yes. Oh my god. But, but what you're seeing now is the same technology. So this is an Aslanti trap that you see on this door. Okay? But it is like a much higher level version of what you saw in the garrison all that time ago. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, let's disable it. Yeah, All right. I, I'm assuming um, it's engineering. Yeah, it's actually mysticism. Oh, oh <laughs> because, we got a mystic door here, huh? Okay, I, th- everybody, this uh, is fucking crazy. Okay, might want to might want to get back. Remember, remember how that uh, had like a killer area? We, we uh, kind of want to no. get back down the hallway a bit. What are you talking but, about? Don't worry about it, Kuiper. Oh, oh. Kuiper, <laughs> Kuiper, yeah. why don't you come back here? All right, so Oren <laughs> reaches out his hand, and tries to magic away the trap. Can, um, good luck. Can, can we auto aid? This isn't a knowledge check, right? No, you can do it, certainly. Okay, auto aid from Mike. From Mr. Okay. Yeah. Auto. Sweet. Auto from Ziva. All right, so only two can, because only two can be cl- close enough to the door. So with Ziva, yeah. if you're auto aiding, I'm putting you there. Very curious how Mike is auto aiding a mysticism. Uh, real quick. Check to remove a trap. I, I'm very curious what that looks I, like. I, I, like. Because I can auto aid anything I have a single rank in, I've been putting a rank in a random skill every single level. So I've always flavored it in those that he's not good at, as he's just like looking over your shoulder, trying to tell you how to do it and getting it wrong, <laughs> which sharpens your senses, you know? Mm, yeah. Okay. okay. Kuiper okay. Uh, like motions as evenly. Uh, let me let me hold on to Quad while you aid. Well, I think. Uh we Fell's got Fell's got, Fell's got, yeah. Yeah. Okay, he's got the backpack. Okay. Yeah. And That's we decided right. it's CeeLo. All right, I forgot yeah, about that. Thanks yeah. for looking out. We don't know if it's CeeLo well, or, yeah, Pot, or Tybee yeah. or Vonnet. I think it's Tybee. We're just going to call it CeeLo. It's CeeLo. <laughs> Tybee. Um, what? Uh, anybody? Any other aids? Just no, that? you can only have the two. Oh, I got two, though. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So we're looking at a 47. All right, that is enough to prevent the magical sensor from activating. Phew. Uh, just for funsies, had you triggered this, you remember how bad the one was all that time ago? Yeah. This one does 14d12 Ooh. damage. Holy shit. Uh, to all creatures within 10 feet of the door. Mike would be Ooh. fine. Well, I have I'm a shitload of electricity <laughs> resistance, too. Oh, that too, yeah. <laughs> 14 D12 is an average of about 92. I, I just looked it damage? up. It's an average between 90 and 92 is the same. Yeah. 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 Gross. I don't like I it. Mean, gross. Losing that off the bat in yeah. the first room right? would be yeah. bad. Yeah, that would be yeah. pretty gross. Uh, all right. So you have successfully disabled it and can proceed through. However, there's one piece of information that I forgot to tell you before you go any further. Uh, the... Skittermander was clinging to something with her hand, with two of her hands, like a toddler with a ball. Fell, 
you noticed this as you were putting the skitter mander whelp in your bag and were able to pull it from her tiny little grasp. It is a Mark III kinetic converter. Uh, and what that is, and I will tell you in just a second. After I Google it. Yeah. I after I, well, I'm going to look it up here. I'm, I'm going to guess that it is it converts from energy to kinetic. A, what do you think? Okay. A kinetic, what do you think? A kinetic converter, also called a rebound generator or bouncy ball, <laughs> is a four inch <laughs> spherical generator that can capture incoming energy and magically redirect it. You wear the converter on your body. The converter counts as a worn magic item unless you install it in your armor, taking up a number of upgrade slots equal to its mark number. This is a mark three. If you are the target of an attack, spell, or similar effect that deals you damage while you wear the kinetic converter, you can activate the device as a reaction, provided the effect wasn't a critical hit. Once activated, the converter disperses the kinetic energy of the attack. Instead of taking damage, you are knocked away from the source of the damage, a distance based on the converter's type, rounding the damage up to the nearest five. You can fall prone during this movement to half the distance you move. If you hit an obstacle before moving the distance the converter threw at you, you take 1d6 bludgeoning damage per 10-foot increment you would have traveled, rounded up to the nearest 10 feet. The damage conversion protects you against additional effects if those effects relied on the damage you negated. For example, a creature's poisonous bite can't poison you without dealing you damage. A kinetic converter protects you only from attacks and similar effects, not from hazards such as lava or extreme gravity. The device works against falling damage, but the conversion hurls you back into the air. <laughs> the damage to distance conversion rate and daily uses of a kinetic converter are based on its model. Once you benefit from a given kinetic converter, using a different one before 24 hours have passed throws off your sense of balance and you become sickened mm. until after an uninterrupted 8-hour rest. Mm. For a Mark III, you get pushed back 5 feet per 10 damage and you have 3 uses per day. Okay. That's kind that of, is interesting. It's neat. I remember looking at this before we went into Dev Arc and I was retooling some mic stuff. I thought about getting, I think, the Mark II version of that. Mm. Does anybody want that? Mm. So you had in the ring? baby's toy? Are you kidding me? I, I feel <laughs> like like that could be a very helpful uh, defensive item for somebody who has gone down a lot recently. Ziva. Oh, hey, what's up? To where if you get hit and you're like, this is probably going to kill me. Instead, it can just knock you the way the fuck back and not take any damage and get you out of combat. All right, let's think like about this range. rationally real quick, though. Who actually goes down a lot? So Mike it's, I'll give you a hint. Mike it's not too. Ziva. Yeah, True. it is Mike. It's the guy in the in the heavy armor. Mm-hmm. I mean, That's, do you have even have any worn items? I think Mike should violently steal so. the baby's toy. <laughs> violently? <laughs> Hell already has it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You monster! He, he needs to sh- just yank that thing away from that. L- and risk that baby. baby not liking me? No, sir. No, thank oh, you. I've already taken it. That's not an issue. Uh, All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in your inventory then. Mike. Okay, yeah. done. Unless unless you want to roll off, Emily. I'm no, not, you, not really. I'm it does trying count to as a worn magical more. item, and I have, have a lot free. of worn. Worn magical sorry. items. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but he can also put it in his armor. I don't. Are you maxed that's out on three. armor no, upgrade I, slots? Yes, I try to stay maxed out on yeah. armor upgrades. Okay. All right. So yeah, you don't have a lot of worn stuff though, so yeah. I think well, you could good. be good. All right. Well, I'm gonna drop it in there. Then. All right. Thank you. There you go. There you go. I love the idea. I can't wait to get to use it when it take a smack. And just <laughs> fly twenty feet away instead of taking a hundred damage. Yeah. And so then instead of set getting... you up for a bull rush next turn. Yeah, yeah. it's perfect. Right, right. Oh that's no what shit! I was oh, that's what I was oh, that's so great. It's a wombo combo. Yeah, yeah. Instead of getting knocked uh, down and getting up again, you get knocked back. Well, and now I'm, yeah. I'm basically permanently hasted, so I can run in full attack, get hit, bounce back, bull rush back in, oh my and God. hit him. Fucking op. You're well, never mind. Roll op. Never mind. That's, you, We're all up. <laughs> my level up, my yeah. armor storm, I can move up to my movement speed and still full attack. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, man. Yep. That's all good. So you got that. You open this door that had an Aslanti trap on it. And what you reveal is the scariest thing of all. Six rows of desk. <gasps> oh, shit. Uh, Stand back. Is, is this the room for signal screams? I bet it is. Yeah. 
Um, six rows of desks with powered down computer displays occupy most of this room. Thick layers of grime and neglect cover patches of the walls and floors, while other sections gleam with a pristine shine. Four hardened glass chambers to the west contain the auxiliary generators, at least some of them. Dull cylindrical towers that stretch from floor to ceiling. The smell of ozone fills the air. You also see that there is a huge gash in the wall, exposing a small side of the star stone. In front of that hole are four Aslanti. However, they look as if they have been exposed to a high amount of shadow corruption. Their eyes are black and they are like phasing in and out of existence. Oh, no. They have concealment on them. Oh. This is a result of you going to Weldy first. The time has dilation has expediated their corruption. Oh. There is one and let me show you some pictures. This is what looks to be the head honcho. Mm. Okay. And then there are three of these. Now, I just want to say, I modified the art myself to give them the black eyes and the weird shit on their face. Okay. I'm a little proud of that. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, good job. Yeah. Um, they and so, so they see you when you come in. I'm sorry, you probably can't see them. On the map, here you go. Bells like what? They look fine to me. I was just saying, they kind of look like Berthani. <laughs> the hell are you doing with the Aslanti? Yeah, yeah, that that doesn't yeah. make sense. Uh, yeah, and so you, you, they're they're standing there, and they like see you open the door, and they're like, "Ah, mistress, you slayed her. We shall slay you." And mesh you with the star stone and the shadow plane until all of your particles are dark with evil. No, and we'll no, see. I don't, I don't no, think so. <laughs> no. I had, to go there with the, had to go there with the. You're definitely evil. With, with evil. With yeah. evil. I'm not a hateful man, but I hate shadow stuff and Atlantean. Let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh.